What's going on everybody? My name is John Hammond. A uh, quick video, just kind of spur of the moment thing. I just got this message from uh, Murph Assange, I suppose is how to pronounce that name. Um, and he was asking, hey, do you remember the Boot to Root Easy PHP challenge? And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> exactly have that just readily accessible in my memory. And he says, all right, it was a challenge about PHP, like loose comparison vulnerabilities. When you use two equal signs rather than three for strict type comparison or strong comparison. So he said, hey, I have a challenge that's pretty similar to it. Do you mind taking a look at it? So I fired it up and I looked through it. Looks like what we have here is some PHP source code that's displayed for us with just a little parameter that you can supply. Uh, maybe by default it didn't show that, and if you were to look at the source it says, oh, you could supply question mark source, and it will go ahead and supply that for you. So there we go. Now we can see, okay, we have the flag included, as in it's a variable we can probably access eventually in the code. Looks like it'll display the file for us if we supply that source argument or that source variable like we did. And then we need to make sure we supply an MD5 get variable, otherwise nothing happens. If we do supply that MD5 variable, it will hash it with an MD5 algorithm. And whether or not we get that correct or incorrect, if they are equal to each other with loose comparison, with weak comparison using only two equal signs, we'll get the first part of the flag. Otherwise it will yell at us and we also need to supply MD4, which is another hashing algorithm similar to MD5, different. <laughs> uh, and they say if you include that and you have the exact same condition where your hash is equal to what you supplied, again, loose comparison, you can go ahead and grab the second part of the flag. So just two tests we need to run through. Um, doesn't seem extremely difficult, but you just kind of have to be able to identify that this is loose comparison in PHP and know some of the magic hash tricks. So, and, and hashing collisions that can happen in PHP because of the way that this type juggling or ha weak comparison can be used and abused. So I said, hey, you actually need to determine these MD5 and MD4 collisions and you can use that PHP type juggling really to take advantage of that. So you could probably enter a string that would hash to that zero E prefix and that PHP will assume is a number um, followed by a bunch of numbers following that that you would expect to see in a hash like a 32 bit or 32 character length hash. And if those are all numbers in PHP, using loose comparison, we'll read that, oh, it's like some scientific notation representation. This is a number, not a real string. Um, and because of that loose comparison, it's not going to care that this is a string or that this is a string because they're not going to be caring about the type. It'll just kind of also consider it a number. So interesting quick bug that I'm not going to deep dive into some of the documentation, but if you were to Google PHP lose comparison, weak comparison, two equal signs, you can track down more about it. And actually he asked for some information like, hey, can you show me some of these things? So I Googled these, did the Googling for him, <laughs> and uh, there are some discussions on it. And same thing with magic hashes. And here. So magic hashes are, if they are considered zero E, they're also equal to the string zero and that they are zero. Um, okay. I also included my repository, Katana, CTF Katana, the documentation side of it, not the utility side of it, that would explain or give some examples for, here are some PHP magic hashes. Um, I have a few listed already for MD5. All of these are numeric and then I guess just alphabet side, and then 0e is the resulting hash. Same thing for SHA-1, in case you ever see that, and same thing with MD4. And I notice, oh, in my MD4 collection, I actually have some um, plain text that still start with 0e, so PHP would consider that a number, and the result, of course, is 0e. Uh, I don't have that for MD5, so that wasn't ready to just spit in and run. I figured, well, we have to go ahead and calculate that. So we can do that we can go ahead and do it. He wanted to join the Discord server, and I said, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, help you figure out that MD5 collision. So let's just make something for that. Um, make directory thing, cd thing, subble-ape.py, totally off the cuff. And let's make this a Python 3 script. I promise I can type. Let's get MD5 from hashlib, and let's go ahead and import some ability 
wow, I keep typing improv. <laughs> Combinations with replacement. We can zoom out on that. I don't think it needs to be that huge for you. And let's go ahead and import string. So, okay. Now what we want to do is go ahead and grab the start of what all of these should begin with, right? 0e needs to be that prefix, so PHP thinks that it's a number. And then we can go ahead and say um, our pool of numbers that we're going to work with for determining just whether or not we can grow a brute force hash that we can try and generate what will have a PHP hash or an MD5 hash that will be 0e and then all numbers. So our original plain text also has to start with that 0e and be filled with numbers. It doesn't matter the length because they're going to end up hashing it and the comparison won't matter. So we know that that's the pool of characters we'll work with. So we will go ahead and create a set of combinations with a growing length because we want to try and brute force this. So I'll do for i in range of 1 to a random number that we can increment if we want to later on. But we'll do combinations with replacement of our pool of numbers that we want to work with, the characters that we'll use with the length that we're growing. So then we have a bunch of these. So let's go ahead and go through each of them and we'll say the two hash is going to equal our start plus the uh, empty string joining together so we just convert the tuple that our combinations with replacements will return to us as a two hash good so if i were to go check that out for us we can python 3 ape and now we're generating what we could use as our plain text and we'll just brute force through with them so that's nice and easy for us. Now we'll go ahead and hash them. We'll say m can equal just an md5 object. We'll go ahead and update it with the string that we want to hash. And then we'll go ahead and grab the then hash or what the new hash is. That's going to be m hex digest. Um, I think that needs to be bytes for Python 3. Yep, it does. So let's go ahead and encode that as utf8 or whatever encoding seems to get it to work because I wrestle with that way too often. So now that we have hashed it, we can determine if then hash uh, starts, those first two characters are equal to our start as we need, and then hash to following that is numeric, and it's just numbers following that. If that's the case, we can print, hey, we got one. That meets the criteria that we need. We can go ahead and print out, let's use an F string here, uh, to hash goes to then hash. And let's put an input statement so we can break that. Okay, so that's kind of a small pool for us to be brute forcing through and we're going to continually grow through that. And I know that will work for us. So let's go ahead and run that. We don't need to print out any of those other things anymore. So let's comment that out and crank. Okay, so this shouldn't take too long. If it does, I'll pause the recording or maybe I had the script wrong and it was a bad condition, but we'll see. Okay, so now we got one. It says 0e, all of those numbers can map to that, which should meet the condition just well enough. So now let's go ahead and take note of that. I'll just throw it here. And let's go ahead back to this URL, take it and start to work with it in curl. So quick and easy. Um, we don't need to see the source anymore because we're just going to try and do the real thing. So we need to supply an MD5 argument, and that has to be this plain text that we want to hash. So I'll paste that in. And now we can see the beginning of the flag, flag part zero, right? PHP colisio. <laughs> and we can assume now we can go ahead and grab that MD4 collision that we've got already calculated uh, and seemingly found some from CTF Katana. So that's a good utility and resource, hopefully. We can say MD4 can equal that. And there we go. Now we have the full flag. Inch CTF, PHP collision is awesome, right? Cool. Okay. Let's call that the flag. And let's go ahead and mark that thing directory as complete. So cool. That is that. Uh, that was just a quick burn run through script to quickly track down what hashes or what plain text will work on the same condition that we need to grab an MD5 hash that looks like something that PHP weak comparison will be fooled by. And we can take advantage of that. So 
we're just able to burn through that challenge, and I guess that wasn't too hard for us. I hope you guys learned something. If you haven't seen this before, hope you're able to crank out some Python code and get a better idea for how you can brute force things really easily with iter tools and combinations and permutations and stuff like that. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do like, comment, and subscribe, all of the YouTube uh, algorithm things, and join the Discord server. And yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.